So to apply an area load, as before, you come over here and you click on area loads button. Uh, before we had one way closed, one way open, uh, column win load, and I think two way load. Now it's simply just one way, two way, column win load and open structure. So let's go over one way loading first. Um, this is the default load, it is the most common. Uh, most people use this uh, in regards to any, in any of the other ones more often. Uh, it can only really be effective when uh, the area that you identify has orthogonal uh, framing into it. So as you can see here, I have this square rectangular shape. So uh, it's one-way loading and two-way loading, and really all the loading types are really, really useful when um, there's framing orthogonal to uh, the shape that you've identified in your corner using your corner node IDs. So uh, let's, go, let's go through an example load here. So selected one way load, corner at node IDs, I'm going to pick the entire extents of the structure. So 16, 18, six, and four. So I have all my four nodes uh, separated by commas there. Pressure magnitude, we're just gonna go uh, for simplicity's sake, 100 PSF. So that's negative 0.1 KSF. And then this is in the global Y axis in the negative direction. Uh, the column beam direction is a new field that we have. This is basically the opposite of what span direction is. So if you imagine this type of structure, you'd imagine that if any kind of decking or any kind of um, floor structure would span between these beams. So you'd expect the span direction to go this way. Uh, well, we'll the way we have it identified is the column and beam direction is really the direction uh, of the the members you wish to load with a one-way load. So because our deck is spanning this way, or our proverbial deck, uh, we want to load these beams in gray uh, because they will be they're attached and supported by uh, these green girders here. So let me go back. Oops, 16, 18, 6, 4. Um, so the column beam direction. It'll always pick the two nodes uh, just by default in the order that you type them in the corner, corner node IDs. Um, but so for in this instance, this is actually the direction we want. So from node 16 to node 18, uh, the, solver were the solver will basically identify this direction. Um, it just happens to be in the global X direction as the column slash beam direction because this can be used uh, to load columns or really any direction. Um, so this is the column beam direction. Again, if we if, if if the beams are going this way or framing this way, you'd select 16 to 4. So we'll do 16, 18, and then we'll just call this a live load. Uh, because I have the equivalent distributed loads on, it'll show that. But if you don't have those on, it'll show up as a normal area load pressure. And then when you click this, now we have our new and improved distribution of equivalent distributed loads. So as you can see, because the spacing is the same between all these beams, uh, the load is the same between uh, the middle beams and then on the edge, it's half the tributary width. Uh, so that is, these exterior beams are, are experiencing uh, half the load. So again, very useful um, in comparison to our previous update for area loads because it does actually uh, distribute to interior members. And we instituted this little variance check. so. Um, again, if, if the members on the inside of your extents of your area load are not orthogonal or there um, there's some quirky you know member links or something like that, um, you might notice that here because the variance will show up. Uh, what, what this is basically doing is it it takes the area that you identified um, with the corner nodes, multiplies that by the pressure to get the area times pressure load, and then it'll sum up all the equivalent dead loads and see if there's any variance. So if there's a variance, you know there's something. Um, incorrect and in how you want how you modeled it so very very simple uh, way of showing the one-way loads let's move on to two-way loading 